Hello everyone, Mike1217 here, welcoming you back to Let's Play Ocarina of Time. We're in the Ice Cavern, we just gotten introduced to Blue Fire, so now we can backtrack a little bit and use the Blue Fire to progress further in uh, this mini-dungeon. Um, because this is a mini-dungeon, I'm gonna count it as a normal dungeon and try to get all, all the Skullshas. From what I'm aware, there are two of them. Which I've already gotten one um, in the last episode. So I'm hoping there's just two of them. I did very mild research on this. I didn't look very hard, but um, from what I know, there are two sculptures here. I just hate this place. I'm gonna try to run past these guys so I don't even have to deal with them. Okay, that worked out pretty well. No damage. So we're making our way back to. Actually, I don't know where we're going. Okay, we're back here. So Blue Fire, like I said last time, and I'll reiterate it, is that it takes down red ice. And you can see over here, there's a couple walls that are covered in this uh, red ice. So we can use the Blue Fire on this. Um, there's two ways we can go here. One is pretty optional, but it's highly recommended. I don't want to see where this goes. And then one is where you progress. This looks like it's where you progress. No, this is not. Okay, this is the optional area. Um, this has extra blue... Oh, this has keys in it, too. You have to look out. This has extra blue fire in it. Actually, I don't think this... this is, I think this has keys, so it's not ice keys. I think it's normal. I hate keys. Get rid of all of them. So yeah, there's blue fire here that's a little more convenient for you to get to. If you need more of it, this is probably the best one to get to. I think these fucking ice skulls, they respawn. It's so annoying. And I can hear another skull here, actually. Um, so there might be three, actually. Because I, I, I know we're... I got in one skull, so I know where another one is. This room sucks! Can I just mention that this room is awful? This room is so awful. All I want to do is get rid of you. This room is so bad. Let me get that heart. Those hearts. Uh, okay, let's use the blue fire on this. This is the compass, if I am not mistaken. That's the chest. Um, yeah, that should be the compass in here. You may have seen the frozen over heart piece, which we're not going to mess with. I'm gonna see if I can find that skull slot though, I can hear it. Okay, so there's our compass. Uh, I'm gonna find the skull slot and then I wanna restock on Blue Fire. Okay, am I safe in here? It seems like I'm safe in here. There you are. Okay, let's get this guy. Yeah, it, it would make sense for this place to have three, because this is a mini dungeon. It's not very big. I can't imagine where else they put Skullshlas. But to my knowledge, there aren't any that are frozen in red ice. Like, you would think that they would put Skullshlas in, in red ice. But I, I, I don't think there are any that are frozen over in red ice. I might be wrong. Uh, let's get two bottles. I don't know how I only got one out of that. So, restocking, you, you just... You, Always want to do this at every opportunity you get. It's getting as much blue fire as you can get. So, and also, I like to uh, unequip it after I get it so I don't accidentally use it. That's happened quite a bit <laughs> to be in the past. Okay, so we're done with this room. Again, it's totally optional. It's just a compass, a heart piece, and extra blue fire, but it's a lot more convenient. And the compass is actually pretty useful here because it allows you to see where you're going. And that uh, is an important thing in this dungeon. It's just being able to see where you're going. Because like this room here has like four different exits, and it's hard to see like which one you need to go for. This is where we need to go. Mount down this, and this will lead to the next part. There uh, shouldn't be anything too bad down here. There's some more icicles and shit. Okay, so we have this room. I gotta get my bow and arrow ready, because there are tons of ice keys here. Yeah, just always, especially if you're doing a three-heart run like me, and you can't afford to take too much damage, take these guys out. Always take them out. Should be, should be it. 
yeah, because those things, they will get me killed easily. So here's another uh, silver rupee thing. Again, you see these all the time now in this game. It's one of very few mind complaints I have with uh, this game. Just the uh, silver rupee puzzles are kind of lame. Um, kind of kind of lazy too. But I can't. I, it's hard to really fault this game with something like that. And I, and I don't really know why. I have no justification for that statement. It just is. But whatever. Gotta deal with it. Um, but, you know, like, rooms like this involve, like, pretty good puzzle solving to get the rupees. So that's something I can give them credit for. Um, in this room, we are, of course, doing a classic ice block pushing puzzle that you see all the time in Zelda games. Um, and other games like to do this, too. Just, like, abuse ice physics. <laughs> oh, man, excuse me. <laughs> With the block pushing and what have you. Um, so here, uh, we might need to get rid of this. Uh, we only have one block to work with, it's, it's uh, this one, and if you have it in a unmovable spot like this, um, you can push it off the sides, there are little edges around here that you can push it off, and once it goes off, it respawns. And basically, you just use this block to reach these higher up silver rupees. And I think... There's a skull slur right there, so that's nice. Uh, I'm being pretty inefficient with my items, I know, but... Not, in fact, I don't even know why I had the ocarina on there. I really don't need it. I'll need it eventually when I get to the end, but not right now. Alright, so there's blue fire over there. We want to make sure we get to that. That should be the last silver rupee. So what I'm pretty sure what we can do here is we can push this ahead. And we can reach the silver rupee by climbing. We shouldn't have to reset the block again. I don't know how you get those red rupees up there. I don't care, but I, just, I always wondered how you get those. Maybe with the block, but whatever. Okay, so I think you can make this jump from here. If you do a roll, jump, got it, cool. Okay, let's refill. Honestly, I don't think we need that much. We're pretty much at the end, but I just want to make absolute sure I have enough of this. Because you can never be too sure. Why can I not? Okay, there we go. Do it again. Kind of tedious, I know, but it's just being safe. I know you need this at least once to get out of here, and then you need it again to get to thaw out the Zora King. Alright. So now what we need to do, we need it to do, stop skipping words, is, um, actually, what, what do we need to do? <laughs> we need to get up there, right? Okay, so I think we can do this from where we are. Uh, yeah, okay, you can push this, be careful not to fall in the hole. Push this here. I mean, this is what they like to do with ice block pushing puzzles is that they put little rocks in the middle of the floor for you to stop the ice block on. Yeah, you see this all the time in Zelda games. Pokemon games do it. All sorts of games I'll love to do these puzzles. And that should do it. Um, you can alternatively have the block a little bit off from the door. Like you can have the block right here where I'm standing and you can make the jump from there. So you don't have to get it in the spot that I have it here. You can get it a little bit off and you can still make it over here. Okay, so up this way should be... Oh god. One of those guys. Quick. Slice, slice, slice. Yeah, those aren't so bad. As long as you just don't get hit, hit by their ice, ice shots. Yeah. Oh boy, I almost got... I almost ran into that. Slice immediately, and yeah, it's actually not too bad. This place wasn't too bad. I was really worried about it. Just there's so much stuff that damages you here. The icicles, all sorts of ice enemies, like ice keys, and whatever the hell those ground things are called. That I don't know what they're called. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what those things are called. And they have like blades and spikes and just all sorts of shit here. But we're done with it. We have a door over here that's kind of hard to tell, but it's a door. 
come through. And we have kind of a mini boss. It is a white wolfos. Um, to my knowledge, these aren't any different from the normal wolfos. They just look different, that's it. I'm trying to get them to turn around. They can do that. Yeah, see, they go down just as quickly. I don't think they're any different as far as dealing damage or taking damage. They just look different. Again, that's just to my knowledge. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's that's what I know. Anyway, uh, we have a big chest here that's appeared, and we can get our prize for going through all that. And that is the Iron Boots. And this is essential for the next temple. And after this, we get hit by a cutscene. We have learned the Serenade of Water, probably my favorite of the warping songs. And this scene right here between Link and Sheik is, is probably the most memorable encounter that they have, in my opinion. I don't know, I just, I always think about the background of this room, the kind of, kind of the starry looking background whenever I, like, whenever I hear Sheik's theme song, theme music. Um, I always think of this room. It's a really neat looking room. Kind of an odd looking room too for like an ice cavern, but whatever. Okay, so now we have the iron boots, so um, we can now equip those, which unfortunately you have to do it on the equipment screen. They're not assignable to C buttons, which um, you know, a lot of us who've played this game know that was a big mistake, and Nintendo definitely acknowledged it. <laughs> And um, they fix it in later games as well as the 3DS remake, and they make the Iron Boots uh, C items or equipable items as opposed to having to go to the pause screen to select it all the time. So that's going to get pretty annoying. I think I might have a way to reduce that. Um, something I might do before I start up the Water Temple is try to get the gold scale from doing the fishing minigame. Which I'll, which I'll speed up that footage, I'm not going to show a lot of that. Or I'll, I'll make that not boring, I promise. So I plan on doing that. Um, let me know if that's even necessary, like if you need to be able to dive that far. I think we might be okay at the silver scale. Like essentially with the water temple, we're going to be using the iron boots like all the time. And being able to dive down uh, further will eliminate some uh, times so we'll have to equip the iron boots. Um, and I, you know, maybe being able to dive down with the the gold scale would be good. 
Because from what I remember, like, okay, we, we have the silver scale now, right? And that allows us to dive down for like six seconds. Um, or whatever that measurement is. You know how it gives you a number when you're diving. I think that's seconds. But, um, yeah, the silver scale allows us to go for six seconds. Let's see if it even says it on there. No, it doesn't give us any any explanation at all. Well, whatever. But yeah, the, the gold scale allows us to dive down for 10 seconds, or whatever the measurement is. And that would be pretty handy if we can get that. Um, I would like to get that, personally. But uh, I'll, figure, I'll figure that one out later. Um, for right now, let's talk to the king after thawing him out. Um, he will give us another essential item for the Water Temple to go along with the Iron Boots. Um, um, the Water Temple can be done without this by crazy people, and for that matter, I think it can be done without the Iron Boots too. But um, I don't, I'm not feeling crazy for this playthrough. I'm gonna use this. This will allow us to breathe underwater. So we'll be having this on at all times in the Water Temple. And uh, that's about it. Um, there's one more thing you can use Blue Fire for here. I, you know, I'm not even going to mess with it. There's a shop that's frozen over that you can get into. It's not that big of a deal. Um, yeah, I'm not going to mess with it. Um, I'm just going to end this episode because this one's starting to get pretty... Uh, not, not too long. I guess I can deal with the shop or I can't. I think it's, like, right over here. Like, the, uh, the Zora King and this are the only things that I can recall that you have to actually bring blue fire out to. Like, the Ice Cavern is the only place you can get blue fire. You might be able to buy it here, though, actually. But, to my knowledge, there aren't that many places outside the Ice Cavern that you need to thaw out blue fire. Let's just, let's just take a look in here. I know there's a blue tunic that we can buy, but obviously we got one for free, so we're not going to do that. Yeah, whatever, let's just stop. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, let me know what you think about the fishing thing, and if I should even bother with that. And uh, if I should, then I will do that next. If not, then I'll go straight to the Water Temple. For now, I'm going to end this episode and um, sign out. So. Thank you guys so much for watching, this has been Mike127, and I will see you next time on Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time.